What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Jeremy Wormy, and I'm gonna do this because I, I can't believe that this is actually a discussion that's going on. Because when you come over here yet again, Doctor Who is uh, seeing a uh, audience drop, a continual score drop over on the uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, considering also the 60th anniversary had a score of 44 percent, which I've shown you. Uh, actually constantly you now have uh the church on ruby road sitting at a 40 percent oh god audiences aren't enjoying this ratings came out the other day and man those ratings were just wonderful weren't they oh my god look how great those ratings were uh sarcasm aside it was actually the worst rated x uh christmas special in history seeing the least amount of overnight viewers out of every Christmas special and out of every first outing for a actual doctor. Well, we got the BBC actually responding to a lot of stuff because besides all this stuff going on here, you know, people uh, stepping out, stepping aside, you know, not wanting to uh, engage anymore for things uh, such as, you know, taking away, uh, changing Davros because you don't want to offend disabled individuals. Yes, changing Davros, who was a man in a life support system and saying he represented the uh, paraplegic and disabled communities, and we don't want to hurt their feelings anymore. Uh, cha a race changing uh, a, a, a historical figure in the form of Sir Isaac Newton, uh, we had, uh, you know, the whole Star Beast episode, which was literally just a trans allegory aimed at children, by the way. That was their children's episode, which was a ongoing trans allegory where you also have the doctor get criticized for assuming pronouns and get blamed and chastised for being a male presenting Time Lord, also destroying one of the greatest storylines in Doctor Who history, being uh, the Doctor Donna dynamic. You also had, uh, you know, this come out recently from uh, Shudi Gatwa himself saying that they will have a episode in the new season addressing his race and his very leftist liberal bubble. You now have the BBC trying to, uh, well, well, dunk, dunk on research saying that they are uh, spreading out woke ideology and everything. BBC dunks on research, accusing it of feeding viewers a diet of woke bias. What, excuse me? Excuse me? Oh, I have more proof to disprove this across the board. Actually, to prove this point that they are actually doing this across the board. Do you want to know why? Because you come over here. Uh, BBC Studios set 20% diversity target for all new productions. This comes out in November of 2020. Uh, what else do we have? We have this whole thing from Ben Walker. The hashtag BBC spends over, I think, 600 pounds. I don't know what that thing is. It, it's euros. I, I don't know. That's British money right there. A year on diversity inclusion staff. Uh, inclusion staff. It is failing, failing license fees. Put payers failing license fees payers with woke nonsense. The BBC is not fit for purpose. Hashtag UKIP has a clear plan for to defund the BBC. We will scrap the license fee and everything like that. You know, that is obviously a, a whole political thing, but he does bring up a good point that uh, taxpayers are funding the BBC. And yes, they are spending this much money a, a year and just staffing for their uh, diversity inclusion stuff, not alone just putting it into shows. Remember, 20%, that means they are hiring people based on check mark, uh, check boxes and everything, solely for being trans, black, gay, paraplegic, uh, sh short person, midget, I, I, I don't care. You know, hiring people based on these uh, characteristics that really don't matter. You also had this that came out, BBC announces plans to be the benchmark and workplace diversity and inclusion, where when you scroll down here, they outright say that they want to have a 50-2012 uh, workforce target, which means 50% women, least 20% black, Asian, or minority ethnics, and at least 12% disabled employees. Again, solely checking boxes in order to hire individuals. So, uh, yeah, 
yeah, feeding a diet of wokeness is pretty uh, blatant when that is a one-sided political argument. But let's see what they had to say to this, uh, shall we? Let, let's see what what is their response to this. The BBC has criticized research accusing the UK broadcaster of peddling viewers a steady diet of woke bias, including news about slavery and gender diversity storylines and drama, which again is happening. They are actually putting that in your shows. They have a checkbox for every show. It is a thing. It is a proven thing. It comes from the BBC themselves. The BBC accused the campaign of for common sense, a group that advocates for freedom and exp freedom of expression of cherry picking examples of so-called woke issues from thousands of hours of output. Well, again, uh, take as for example, as outright was watching game show networks over Christmas and everything. He lives in the UK and stuff. And he said he could count. He, he can't count on two hands. The amount of times he has seen. He literally saw paraplegic black trans people, midget black cross dressers, so on and so forth over and over and over again. This is a thing that they actually have. You have to have this amount of diversity in every single show. So no, it is not cherry picking. It's not even out. But you want to know? You want to know something? Uh, they're they're dunking on something that's not even out yet. The campaign for common sense has yet to publish its research. So this is just a PR move. This is a PR move. They know how bad this uh, research is. They know how bad this information is when it gets out to the broader public. They know it's not going to be good. So they're already trying to come out in front of it and say, hey. It's cherry picked data. It's not accurate data. It's not right data. So we can't even criticize the data that are putting out right now to say that it's cherry picked. They just have to come out and say it's cherry picked. It's not accurate. It's bad. Yet it hasn't been released yet. But the group appears to have coll collated. I'm probably saying that wrong, uh, wrong. Examples of content that has upset relatively small numbers of viewers. The BBC said it did not cons constitute analysis. It's it's only a small number of people, everybody. It's only a small number of people. Uh, only a small number of people. Only a small number of people actually watch a Doctor Who episode, for example, uh, in a nation that had 70 million individuals living in it. A show that at one point in time was boasting about 10 million overnighters, 11 million overnighters, so on and so forth. Just a small number of people uh, <coughs> are, are, are angry with this, okay? Just a small, tiny bit. Yeah, that, that that's the problem. Findings were shared with the Daily Telegraph, which reported that the Campaign for Common Sense surveyed BBC content in an attempt to expose bias over issues including race and gender. The group said BBC News published 55 separate stories about slavery, including people reflecting on their historical links to the slave trade. The Campaign for Common Sense pointed out how dramas had embraced issues about race, describing how an episode of Waterloo Road featured students revolting over their school slavery links. Oh, we also had a example actually in Doctor Who again, Rosa, all about Rosa Parks and how the doctor, a white woman at the time, being uh, Jodie Whittaker, are, uh, by the way, uh, Jodie Whittaker isn't actually the doctor, but Jodie Whittaker, uh, Dr. Karen, whatever you want to call her, uh, the bent, told Rosa Parks to sit in the front. So it wasn't Rosa Parks' idea anymore. It wasn't Rosa Parks actually standing up and making a statement on her own. It was a woke white woman that told her to do it. Mm, gotta love that. Uh, the research added that gender issues were also explored in BBC dramas. This included a June episode of Casualty in which non-binary character Sarah Brockner, Arian Smothersist, uh, discuss their surgery. Oh, oh, guys, guys, it's not woke, okay? It's not. Th this is cherry picking examples. As Deadline reported, the casualty storyline received 142 complaints from disgruntled audience members. Oh, just 142 complaints, guys. It's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. It's not like we're pushing wokeness in there into everything, even though the simple fact that non binary is outright a woke ideology point. 
people don't normal people don't identify as non-binary normal people don't acknowledge that they don't even think about that the fact that you are saying non-binary okay is actually a political point that that that's the whole point there and that is wokeness that that outright wokeness more recently doctor who received 144 complaints from people who felt the inclusion of yasmine finney's transgender character rose was inappropriate well, they're not going to give you examples of why, but maybe, just, just, just maybe, because it was in Star Beast. Yet again, the children's episode where Yasmin Finney, who is a 27-year-old transgender actress, played a 15-year-old who was trans. Maybe that's why people were uh, pushing back and saying that this was bad and wrong. Mm, I, I don't know. No. The Campaign for Common Sense said, This research reveals that rather than upholding those high standards of impartiality, parts of the BBC continue to peddle a steady diet of woke bias, both through the plot lines of popular dramas, but also in some of its news coverage. I'd say the majority of its new co news, co news coverage, I could say words, and I would say the vast majority of their actual content. They have diversity quotas. They have diversity and inclusion quotas across the board. Like I showed you, they have a 20% diversity target for all new productions, which uh, I'm pretty sure has actually gone up in recent years. You also have yet again, the fact that they want a 50, 20, 12 workforce. Okay. And on top of that, they are spending how much money? on uh, diversity inclusion alone okay just in their staffing yeah they are doing this is an actual thing they are doing so simply saying they're cherry picking examples when you bbc boast about it how can they be cherry picking examples when you champion it Oh my god. Oh my god. Somebody noticed what we've been saying this whole time. Oh, they're just cherry picking. Stupid! A BBC, BBC spokesperson said, cherry picking a handful of examples of highlighting genuine mistakes and thousands of hours of output does not constitute analysis and is not a true representation of BBC content. We are proud that our output seeks to represent all audiences and a range of stories and perspectives. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So he's just cherry picking the extreme examples and that's bad. It's not accurate. It's, it's not actually a thing we're doing. But at the same time, we're proud. We're proud to be putting this stuff out there. We're proud to be representing our audiences that we actually uh, do. And, you know, we're proud of our diversity and inclusion. You just admitted to it. You're admitting that they did it right, that their audience, their whole analysis, everything they've been saying is correct. You just admitted to it right there. Okay. Uh, how, why, where else do we have to say? You said it yourself right in this thing. You're cherry picking a handful of examples. We are proud that our output seeks to represent all audiences and a range of stories and perspectives. So they, you are doing it. You are doing it. Good for you, BBC. Good. You finally admitted it. You finally admitted it that you are a woke company. Good for you, which is also funded by taxpayers, by the way. Hashtag defund the BBC. Across the entirety of our service, there will, of course, be occasions when people disagree with or, with or want to challenge what they have watched or heard and are, and we have well-publicized -publi routes for them to do that. Do you? Do you? Because all this stuff's still up. And again, 20% uh, diversity targets for all new productions. Uh, spending this amount of money, 60, 600,000 pounds, I'm willing to bet, on diversity and inclusion staff and wanting a 50 2012 workforce. Again, you have this, you have this, you have this, you have this, Justin Doctor Who. Again, very leftist liberal bubble episode coming. I don't think you dunked on anything at all. I think you just uh, came out in front of a, a PR nightmare and are trying to obfuscate the facts that you admit it. You admit it. But I'm going to leave it there, guys. Let me get your guys' thoughts on all this down in the comments below. What do you think? Is, is the BBC actually just doing a PR move because this is going to be a PR nightmare for them? 
or, or did they actually win that dunk? Because I say no, but uh, let me get your guys' thoughts. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it out, friends, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell for every time I put out a new video and go live, and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye for now.